Welcome to the final track, final session of the Tomcat Con track. Um, it's aimed as a bit of a wrap up. Um, I'm not going to bother introducing myself. Um, I think you pretty much. If anybody here doesn't know who I am, then something's gone wrong this week. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you all for attending. Um, I hope it's been useful. Thank you for making it through to the last session. Um, it is nice to see so many of you still here at the last session on the Thursday when normally people are dashing for the aeroplanes, so thank you all very much. I did say on Tuesday that we had some new PMC members that I couldn't announce. I'm pleased to say that both Coty and Huxing are now fully-fledged members of the Tomcat PMC, so congratulations to both of you. So, with this wrap-up session, what I wanted to do was really look forward and think about what I think might be happening in the Tomcat community and things around it over the next year-ish. So, obviously the big thing on the horizon is Java EE8. It's due June, July, summer-ish. Um, the main thing that we're going to get there is Servlet 4. Um, so that's HTTP2 and all the other things that we've talked about this week. In terms of the other specs, I'm not aware that anything has happened on them. So what I'm expecting is what's happened with the GSE, JSP spec in the past, which is a few days before the deadline, the maintenance lead will publish an update to the spec that will fix a few typos, maybe add a couple of convenience methods, not really add anything significant, um, and then push it out there, and that'll be what we'll end up implementing. Um, sort of like half a day's development effort each, I, I would, I'm imagining. So what that means for Tomcat 9 is we're currently releasing milestones. Um, it is, they're going to stay as alphas, milestones, <laughs> until the specification API is fixed. Once that's, f sorry, it'll be their milestones at the minute, they'll be alpha once the spec is fixed. As soon as the implementation is done, we'll switch it to beta. That's going to be a very short period of time unless something truly awful goes wrong in the trailer's implementation. Um, that's about half implemented already, and I only stopped because there was a, wasn't clarity on what the API was going to be. So that's alpha, alpha will happen as soon as the specs go final. Um, beta will happen very shortly afterwards. Stable is the one that will take a little bit longer. Um, and the good thing with all the delays with Java E8 is that Tomcat 9 has been out there for a while. Tomcat 8.5, which is heavily based on it, has been out there for a while. And it's already had a lot of real testing. People are using it actively in production. We've ironed out a lot of the sort of early issues that we'd normally expect to iron out. Um, when will it be production ready? No idea in terms of fixed date. I wouldn't be surprised if it was before the end of this year assuming that Java E8 delivers when we're expecting it to. So compared to previous releases, that should be fairly quick. Um, there is some work to do around Java 9 modules, but that is still a moving target. Um, and as I've said before this week, I'm not really that keen on spending time working on it when the target's still moving. Um, we've got an idea of what's going to be involved. It's probably not going to be too much, hopefully. Um, so we'll let that settle down and Java e, sorry, Java 9 and Java E8 aren't tied together at the minute so we can always treat making it run on Java 9 as just something we fix in a point release because I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to massively affect any of the existing APIs. Uh, at the other end of things, Tomcat 6. We are now slowly closing down the resources. Um, Bugzilla was closed to new bugs, I think, last week. Um, there's something just under 20 open Tomcat 6 bugs. I think it's 18, it might be 17. Um, so we need to re review all of those. What, what I've been doing this time is, no, it, previously, I've just changed the Tomcat version to whatever the latest one is and left them. Um, what I'm trying to do this time is go through them and actually give them a bit more of a review, see if, the, you know, can we actually implement this? Is, does it look like there's a demand for it? Do we need to mark it as won't fix? Um, and try and actually close them out rather than just punting them again. I expect that some will end up being punted because it'll be, a, well, it's a nice enough idea, it's just a fair amount of work, so it's not quite an itch I want to scratch, but 
it makes sense enough that I don't want to just close it as won't fix so that in that those ones will probably get punted and there'll probably be a couple of them. Um, the other steps, um, once those are done, we make Bugzilla read only completely for six. We'll remove Tomcat 6 from the downloads page at some point. Once we've done that, we'll remove it from the mirrors and then we'll drop the links to the docs. It's worth remembering that all of the Tomcat 6 versions will still always be available on the archive. The docs will always be available on the website, we're just not linking to them. No, there, are, there will be no more security fixes for 6. Um, well, with the usual caveat that unless 3, MP, 3 PMC members decide it's a really good idea, get together, do it and vote for it. And if they do, that's fine. Um, the chances of me being one of them is pretty slim. There might be three. It's possible, and it depends what the issue is. Um, and to some extent, it depends what those PMC members are still supporting that uses six in their organisations that a release would be helpful for. Um, personally, I'm trying to avoid doing that. So it's highly unlikely is what we normally say. Um, so yes, the six releases are still all on the archives as are all the ones back to Tomcat 3.2. The docs will always be available on the website as are the docs all the way back to 3.2. So we just don't li link to them. Was that a question over there? Good news is the uh, the frequent one of the frequent uh, top cat six release managers is a uh, very friendly guy who works for an organization known for a long tail support contracts. So if you absolutely require continued support for top cat six, raise your hand on the mailing list and it might happen. Um, so that brings us on to Tomcat eight, and because we try and want to try and support three versions in parallel. We don't really want to be doing 7, 8, 0, 8, 5, and 9. Um, so, as I said, what we've always wanted is 8, 0 to 8, 5 to be seamless, modulos, maybe some simple configuration changes. 8, 0 has got a slightly slower release cadence. There is no fixed date on when 8, 0 is going to come to an end. And what we heard at the meetup last night and various people have sort of said in the room or in the corridors, is it would actually help if we put a fixed date on that. So I think that's a discussion that we need to have on the mailing list to see, well, are we going to put a fixed date on this? And if so, what is it? Or is somebody going to step up and volunteer to actually keep it running in parallel with 8.5 for at least the next X months and then we'll revisit it maybe. But we'll try and get some more clarity on that because at the minute it's not. Um, so Tomcat 7. That is going to be supported until Java EE9 is close to being released. Now, I've put an idea here on when I think that might be. The question was asked on the mailing list, and I think I went through a similar sort of logic and came up with a slightly different set of dates. Um, it's going to be no earlier than end of next year at the absolute earliest and I would be amazed if we end of life Tomcat 7 that early. Um, it all depends on what, what happens with Java E9. That's meant to be a year after Java E8 but I don't see that happening. Um, I think it's going to st stretch longer and then there's also then the question of we're not going to end of life Tomcat 7 until we've got a reasonable degree of certainty when Tomcat 10 is actually going to be entering into service. Because there's always some overlap. We don't want too much, we don't want too little. So, yeah, question at the back? Um, yeah, um, I may have missed something or not following, but is there a chance that um, Tomcat 8 gets end of life before 7? Tomcat 8 O might, but 8 5 will carry on. Um, but we might end of life Tomcat, and the plan was always when we created 8 5 was to end of life 8 0 fairly quickly. But, the, with, but that's why it's important for us that people can move from 8.0 to 8.5 without hitting anything horrible. And if people report it, we'll, we'll fix it nice and quickly. So, yeah, I mean, if top Java E9 says released, um, not next year, let's say it's six months late, that's end of next year. Say we don't have certainty on that until three months beforehand. So we'd probably aim, shoot then for end of life, 12 months after that. So that's what, end of 2019. So yeah, it's somewhere around 2019, maybe, but it's very movable depending on what happens with Java E9. Are you only doing bug fixes for 8 or also it's 8.5? Um, 
it really comes down to there's no fixed rule on what we backport to what. Um, everything goes into trunk, so everything goes into nine. Um, pretty much everything goes into 8.5. Some internal cleanup doesn't. Uh, bug fixes currently are going into not trunk 8.5, 8.0, and 7. Um, and it's normally what happens is that the, we will put some bug fixes all the way back to the earliest supported version. And it comes down to a judgment call as to how severe the bug is versus what fixing it might do to somebody who's, who thought they're on a nice stable release that wasn't going to change. Um, everything will get anything that's supported will always get security fixes. Um, so there's no hard and fast rule and actually it's getting easier to backport stuff. Um, it, a lot of it depends on whether the code that needs to be backported has gone through a refactoring. Um, if it's in the connectors it's horrible. If it's anywhere else it's, you, it's, it's now fine. I mean, usually seven to six was was la was potentially horrible in lots of places. Um, that's gone away now. The main the main area of difficulty is going from eight five to eight around the connectors because of all of the refactoring we had to do. But equally, we don't want to backport all the refactoring to eight because that will create a different set of problems. <laughs> yes. I guess I wonder. So Ubuntu sixteen oh four has what five years of support and it mm -hmm. comes with. Uh, it's highly likely not by us, but 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 the but I, I imagine that Emmanuel will be, will be backporting stuff from eight five to eight, um, and because because seven is still being supported, actually it might actually be easier to take the fixes from seven than eight five, depending on the area of the code. Um, so we have a Tomcat committer that's plugged into that, um, so that should happen. Yeah, the reality is that Ubuntu is the one. That to their community, uh, right? We are not supporting their product, right? Okay. So if they want to backport our patches to later versions, they're free to do so, and presumably they will work with us to develop those patches, but we won't do them directly. Right? I mean, our, what we've said is we will, we will always give at least twelve months' notice of end of life of a major version, um, but we've never bit, we've never made any promise over and above that. And we'll try and do more, and we'll, we'll try and do better. But that's what we've said we will we will do. So you mentioned um, how, how do you know as somebody who's just a user that a particular version is production ready? Because uh, um, you scared me with that because we've been using A5. Yeah. We considered it production ready. Well, maybe I don't know if you do. Uh, yeah, a, if we if we call it stable, that's what that's that's what we consider production ready. Um, it tends to be, have we, I, my, my personal yardstick is something along the lines of, have we had two or three releases in a row without any bugs that make me go pale? <laughs> um, or any sort of regressions that have caused hassle? And it, it's, it's a sense of, yeah, actually, but we've had those three releases out there, lots of users have been using them, and we haven't had, we've, we've just had the steady trickle of bugs that people have stumbled across that have been in the code base for years and years and years, and they just happen to have stumbled across them. Um, if we've still got you know, two or three major bugs being reported on each release, and they're related to code that's changed, and then right. that, we say, no, that's not stable. But it, there's no hard and fast rule. So it's a, stable? Yes, oh. yeah. yes, definitely. And to be honest, I'd be close to calling nine stable if it wasn't the fact that the API wasn't stabilized. Yeah. And it could go from milestone to stable very quickly. Um, but it needs three committed, sorry, three PMC members to all consider it stable before it will get a, and th there needs to be a majority of pe uh, uh, more people thinking it's stable than beta. So um, it's, it's a PMC decision. And we will take feedback from the community. As, as I said before, um, I will quite happily, if we have a release that's got 10 PMC votes and one user pipes up and says, hang on, this is broken for me, that's enough to kill the release. Now, if we stick to the Apache rules, we don't have to, we could release it anyway, but 99 times out of 100, it will say, yeah, fine, um, we'll listen to that. that, that's valuable feedback. You've gone to the trouble of testing it, <laughs> we'll, 
we wanted you to test it, so now you've told us we're going to listen. Then please go and vote. <laughs> um, so yeah, when Tomcat 7 is end of life is a little bit of a guessing game at the moment. Um, so if we go back to the other end and, and Tomcat 10, um, what do I think might be in that? Um, for the, the servlet spec is fairly easy because that's all the stuff that got punted out of servlet 4 that we decided we didn't have time to do. So request cancellation was mooted. Um, in HTTP 2, the container knows if the client has said, I don't want that request anymore. So, um, and potentially we could pass that information onto the app via some form of listener. Um, so there's something there that will be discussed for servlet 4 point next. Um, async parameter processing, you can process request bodies and write response bodies using async code, but you can't actually read form parameters in an async manner. You have to wait for the whole body to turn up. So that was discussed as something we could do. And overlays goes all the way back to servlet 3, um, back when people were talking about, oh, I forget what the magic phrase was, it was something to do with clouds and multi-tenancy and there was some lovely phrase that was all over Java EE and then got forgotten in about six months. Um, but here the idea is that if you're deploying the same app multiple times with slight tweaks for different customers, different departments, whatever, then you can have one common app and then you have an overlay for each of those customers that had the specific customizations for that particular deployment. And then when you wanted to update it, you just updated the master copy and the, the multiple instances all picked up those updates in one go. So all you had to do was update one wall, leave the overlays alone, and updates for in that particular scenario were easier. The good news is all the code we need to do that is implemented, ready to go in Tomcat and has been since Servlet 3 because I went and implemented it when we thought we were doing it. And literally the week after I'd finished implementing it, it got dropped from the spec. Um, I wasn't overly happy, but it was actually, it was a, it did have some other side of um, benefits because it, it forced us to rewrite the resources handling that was getting incredibly spaghetti-like. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot better. Um, JSP, Unified Expression and JASPIC, I'm not aware of anything that's particularly going to happen, so I think they'll just be in maintenance. Um, WebSocket, the one big ticket item there is a, a standard API for WebSocket extensions. So at the minute, Tomcat has um, the compression extension, Jetty has a compression extension, I think they've also got a multiplexing extension, but they're all written to our own internal APIs, you can't chop and change them. It would be nice if there was a standard API for extensions that you could then just plug in to the WebSocket implementation. Um, Having said that, it might not be the easiest, that API might not be the easiest thing to write because to get those extensions working efficiently, you really need to be plugging into some of the low level processing. Um, so the right API then potentially depends on how you've actually done the implementation. And I just don't know whether we'll be able to get to sort of a common agreed sensible API amongst all of the um, WebSocket implementers. But that's what the expert group's for. If it starts up again um, and if it's agreed that extensions is a way to go then that's what we'd be working on. Um, Jack is the authorization, sorry, yes the authorization com component or, or um, how did I do that? Uh, that, well, that wasn't my plan right. Yeah Jack is the authorization counterpart to JazzPick so that's the Java authorization contract for containers, I think. Um, this has been on my list of things to do to look at for a long time. The main reason for look, wanting to look at it is if it provides a standard API that apps can then use to do th things like add users, remove users, update users' passwords, that would be a useful thing to have. Um, I don't know whether it does or not. I want to go and have a look. We'll see. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then the usefulness of it becomes rather less. Um, other things for Tomcat 10. Uh, this, this is sort of a theory that I have um, mooted several times um, and it, I must stress this is my personal thinking. It is absolutely in no way um, should be taken as the consensus view of the project. So the thinking goes, the main reason for having APR native was that 
you could use OpenSSL, so TLS was a lot faster. Well, we don't need the APR native connector now because we can integrate OpenSSL with the, the NIO and NIO2 connectors. So potentially we could drop APR native altogether. Now that would be a nice thing because there are some annoying bugs in APR native that are really difficult to track down and when you hit them the JVM crashes. It would be nice to just make all of that go away. So okay, if we've got <coughs> APR native, well hey, we've, I've started so I may as well carry on. Um, do we need NIO and NIO2? Um, there aren't any particular performance differences between the two. They, one isn't particularly easier to integrate than the other. If anything, NIO2 is a little bit more complicated. Do we still need, could we just have the NIO connector? Don't know. Um, is anything going to happen with HTTP next? Maybe. I mean, discussions are happening. Whether anything will happen in the Tomcat 10 time frame, I don't know. Um, reactive, <coughs> that's a, um, Rotten talked about that um, yesterday and we talked about it more at the meetup last night. There is definitely interest from people who want to be able to write reactive style apps directly to a reactive API rather than going via the server API because it's a little bit clunky. Um, could we put that in? Um, SSI, do, is anybody still using server side includes? If, I drop, if we dropped that package, would anybody even notice? That might be a question for the users list. Um, but I suspect it's not that widely used. Um, signed code. I mean, at the minute, we sign all of the Windows. Um, we sign the Windows installer and we sign the Windows uninstaller so you don't get nasty error messages when you install on Windows. But nobody's actually noticed, or at least they haven't complained, the few releases we haven't signed because we're having problems <coughs> with the code signing service. So I'm wondering you know, how much do people actually care about that? Um, and taking it going the other way, um, we have the option that we could sign every single jar. Um, the only people that the only people I know that have used signed jars have turned around and said that's lovely, but it doesn't help us in our particular scenario because every jar we ship has to be signed with the same certificate, so we strip out anything they do and redo it ourselves anyway. And that's to do with running Java in the browser, and it has to work that way. Um, so maybe um, if, we, if we talk about. Um, it's sort of more sort of project development -y type things. Moving to Git, I think, is just a matter of time. Um, and it's, a, it's there was general consensus amongst the developers probably about a year ago that, yes, we want to move to Git. Um, it just needs somebody to find the time to run through the process, make sure it works, um, and find some answers to some of our SVN integration questions. But I think it's all doable. Um, so that, that, I think, is, is going to happen at some point. Um, periodically we get asked do we want to move to Maven um, this came up again over lunch today uh, again this is a personal view I think Maven is unlikely um, I think there there are always costs associated with with that change and I haven't yet seen anybody articulate benefits sufficient to justify the associated costs um, moving to something that isn't ant that, that I could believe would happen if a compelling argument would, came forward. And to some extent, if somebody could come up with a compelling argument for Maven, I think we'd move. Um, I, personally, I think it's fairly unlikely that that will happen given where the community is at the moment. Something other than that, quite possibly. Um, Gradle got mooted at lunchtime. I think that, that, that could happen, maybe. Chris? If you're, uh, I mean, if you're done with the... um, I'm done with that, oh, yes. Oh, Go on then. Yeah, fair point. Um, TLS 1.3, that should be in there. I'm also interested, <coughs> maybe not personally doing it, but if somebody is motivated to see if they can get uh, our native connector to build against Libre SSL, that would be nice. Not just open SSL. Theoretically, the APIs are compatible right now, but it's going to require some monkeying around with the build process. 
that, uh, that, that, that sounds like a job for Rainer to me. Um, it's his, his area of expertise is certainly not mine, but equally if there's anybody in the room um, or you know anybody that's interested in it, then yeah, happily, if there's a patch to do that so we can build with either, happily take it. Um, so other things that um, are being talked about, um, so possibly some form of community-based Tomcat training course. Um, I've managed to persuade my employer to donate their old Tomcat training material. It's a bit out of date, but it's a possible starting point. Somebody else has indicated um, on the, via the wiki that they've, they're in a similar situation. They've got some material they might be able to contribute. The idea is that we put together an outline of the course on the users list, a bit like we did for this conference, and then put together a bunch of modules that you could then pick and choose from to build a training course and then community members could then give that training course whether it was committers or or anybody it would be it would be there and we could potentially do webinars on individual modules there are all sorts of things we could do with it but there would be this community training resource um, i'd like to do try and do some more things with user groups and meetups but these tend to be local things so if this is something you that you'd like to see in your area yeah, speak up feel free to use the users list to try and organize it Feel free to use the user list to try and badger at least one committer to turn up to it if you'd like them to. Um, feel free to use the user list to tell the committers to stay the heck away, um, as, as you wish. Um, but getting the community get together, having those meetups, I think is a useful thing to do. Um, please take advantage of the community resources. If there's anything the foundation can do to help, let us know what it is. Um, we, we will do our best. Um, other things, yeah, there's plenty of opportunity to get involved. And we've just talked about the training course, the meetups. Um, it isn't just bug fixing. The website is desperately in need of an overhaul and has been for a while. Um, if, you want, if you want to help with that, please do. Documentation help. Just simply cleaning up the code. Um, there are lots of areas in the code where it's just somebody going through and doing a bit of cleanup would actually be a big help. So it, you don't have to, to fix the big, nasty, complicated bug. Um, <coughs> we do try and leave. The, the simpler bugs open for a while to give people a chance that want to get involved to pick them up and run with them. If you'd like to give it a go and you want to ask for some help, you know, where should I start with this? What do I need to look at? Then you know, feel free to ask on the dev list. We'll happily give you pointers about what to set up, where to look, how to go about it. We'll look at um, going along the same thing. We'll look at maybe like creating a tag in Mozilla for like something like a group or something. Possibly, yeah. yeah that we way you can easily filter all of them. Yeah, we, yeah, we could do that. that um, yes, because it does support tags. So, and the, the, in some ways, one of the good things about Tomcat actually causes us problems there. In that, because I like to go and close all of the open bugs before release, then the low-hanging fruit doesn't hang around for very long. Um, it's almost worth considering leaving the low-hanging <coughs> fruit for longer. Um, but then it, it's a trade-off. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We just yeah. And, and if not, we've got enough Bugzilla admins on the project to add it. So cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that brings me to the end of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, any more questions? Right. So, um, given your uh, dates for Tomcat Nine. Yes. I'm concerned with, with my release now. How much of a drop in replacement will 9 be for 8.5 um, if you're not giving any of the server before stuff? You know, basically server.x and that's the data. Um, I want my instances to be able to... Almost, I, I, the, only, the, the only differences will be um, things like Tomcat 9 doesn't send the reason phrase and doesn't give you an option okay. to send the reason phrase. The option to have the request line validation be a little more lenient. It doesn't exist in nine. It forces you to be spec well more spec compliant. It's actually still slightly lenient, and that might get tightened up further at some point. Um, but otherwise, and at times I've gone through and I've actually done diffs between eight five and nine and copied stuff across just to make sure that it's they're in they're in, they're in sync as much as they realistically can be, bar some underlying refactoring. The public API the sort of the APIs you'd be using the behaviour should be the same. And is contact nine going to be tied to Java? No, Java 8. Okay. Tomcat 9 will require Java 8. Tomcat 8.5 requires Java 7. For running Java 8, 
Yeah, that's fine. So, seven or later. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's always all. It's always all later. It's a minimum Java version. So yeah, they'll be they'll be fine. Um, yes. Definitely. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, uh, we would be more than happy to put translation, translated versions of the docs on the website. What historically, what we just need to be careful of is obviously we. We, you, we can't keep them up to date unless we happen to speak the language in question, which I certainly don't. Um, so there, there is an issue of keeping them up to date and keeping them in sync, but uh, I think that there are ways around that, and part of the a website overhaul could perhaps even look at are there ways that we could, we could structure things that would handle that better. And the whole lot served through HTTPD, so in theory, we could have it auto negotiate and pick the right language based on the user's browser if we've got it, um, if we wanted to be really clever about it. But certainly, as a starting point, if, if it exists and it would be useful on the website, then yeah, let, let's get it on there and get it done, definitely. Any more? Uh, in which case, thank you very much and safe travel home, everybody.